Hi everyone, um, this is my second week of operating this crane. Um, so compared to my first week of operation of this crane, I want to do a better video or a clearer video of how to catch a slow swim on a Wolf 180B Luffin tower crane date of manufacture 2005 um, so basically just like I said I will upload another video of which will teach you which would explain better to you about how to um, slew the crane depending on the configuration um, that is also very important when it comes to catching the swing and as we all know there are two types of swing there's the jib or the trolley swing and the slow swing. So basically, um, this particular crane, so basically there are two ways to slow as well to start with. You can either, depending on the length of your jeep, usually from 50 meters and above, you would need to tap the joystick in the direction you want to slow in, and then Follow in motion. I will explain what following in motion and filling the crane is to you on the next video. So basically, on this particular crane, you don't need to tap into the first gear because the crane is quite responsive. So basically, I'll put the crane into the first gear. That's the crane moving on the first gear, and then I will advance into the. I'll wait for it to move a little bit just to, just to be able to get in motion and then I'll go into my second gear and I'll keep it moving for a bit just to maintain that motion and like we all know before you slow in direction you must wait for your load to slow to, to swing in that direction before you increase your speed it just helps the crane to, to, to maintain a constant motion so basically, I'm on my third gear now, just about when you are approaching where you're going to stop. Um, as a good crane operator, you need to know where your stopping distance is. You need to know when you need to start slowing down. So basically, your stopping distance tells you where you need to start slowing down. So say I'm about to stop in a few minutes, then I bring my gear to the second gear. And then you can watch the motion going. I keep it on my second gear until when I find out that my jeep is in line with my hook block then i'll bring the crane to an halt depending you might have a swing depending you might not have a swing but there's something you call the little adjustment in this particular situation i created little or no swing because i took in con into consideration my stopping distance which helped me reduce the speed of my load now say for example you didn't take into account consideration of stopping distance so for example i'm swimming in the fourth gear and my load is just flying all over the place and then i go into the third gear once you keep your eye on the hook block you can see the hook block going i was going in the fourth gear i tried to catch up with it and then there might be a little swing still you catch that in the second or the third gear because i was in the second or the third gear when i created the swing and then there you go there's also what you call the back notcher, depending on the configuration of the crane. So the idea is, for every um, action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So say, for example, I slew to the right in the first gear, and in the second gear, and I've created a swing, um, and I've created a motion. There will definitely be an equal and opposite reaction when I stop. So say, for example, I stop now. I've stopped now, but it looks still swings forward. Then you catch it with the second gear because you move to get to that direction in the second gear. And there you go, you catch it bang on with little, with no swing. And then you apply your swing things. Um, obviously, this takes a lot of practice, and as we all know, practice makes perfection. But that is the basic way and the basic knowledge of how to catch a slow swing, which I used in my other video as the old principle. What I was trying to say actually is the basic principle of catching the swing, whereby you slow in a direction, you stop, you keep your eyes on the hook block or on the load to see what direction it flows into. As soon as you can catch the feel of the crane, you would know how much you would need to slow to catch the swing. 
So basically, on this particular crane, I've cut the filling of the crane. I already know how the crane operates. I know how far it moves if I put it in the first gear. Like just now, I put it in the first gear. I know how much it would move if I put it in the second gear. My stopping distance is very important. I start slowing down. And as soon as I get to where I will feel like I'm going to stop and there's going to be a little swing, I leave it in the first gear and then I put it back to neutral to stop. As soon as I watch where my load's losing to, and then I give it that same amount of force to catch the swing. And always remember your eyes has to be on the hood block and then you put your brakes off. And then another little secret is that the position of the hook block is not always necessarily the same position of your jib, especially on the loafing cranes. Sometimes your jib is slightly one meter ahead of the load or one meter behind the load. You also have to take that into consideration when it comes to catching the swing. But sometimes your hook block, your jib, your actual jib, the tip of your jib is one meter behind your load. As soon as the load gets to the point of return, the point of return is where, how far the load slews from where you've stopped to an halt. So say for example, you stop your slowing motion to an halt at this point. At this point, I've stopped my slowing motion to an halt. My stopping distance is the point where my hook block gets to, my point of return rather, and then it begins to return. That is the catching point. That is where you need to slew to to be able to catch this way. Um, there is a lot more to explain, which I will be explaining in different videos, which would also bring a better understanding to the audience. If this video has done you any good, or has been, has taught you anything, or has been um, advantageous to you in any way, click the like button, subscribe on my next, uh, subscribe to my page. Um, it will give you access to other tips of operating building of confidence in of the operations of tower credit. Um, subscribe to my page which also gives you the opportunity to see every video each time I post it up and trust me a combination and a constant studying of this video would get you to that point where you want to be a tower credit operator without worries. Thank you. See you on the next see you on the next page.